With the patient in the supine position, digitally reduce any external hemorrhoids to facilitate insertion of the anal dilator. Lubricate the dilator and insert into the anal canal and remove. Lubricate the anoscope kit nested together and gently insert into the anal canal. Remove the dilator and anoscope, leaving the port in the anus. The port may be secured to the buttocks with stay sutures. Remove the suture from the package by grasping the needle with a needle holder. Thread the loose end of the purse string suture through the open end of the anoscope, under the transparent bridge, and back over the outside of the bridge towards the opening. Attach a clamp to the loose end of the suture and place behind one of the anoscope handles and out of the way. The dilated anal canal and transparent anoscope enables the dentate line and underlying anatomy to be visualized. The anoscope with the EEA hemorrhoid stapler kit has uniformly placed circumferential graduations that help to guide even purse string placement. Using the anoscope graduations to maintain a consistent circumferential placement, create a purse string suture in the mucosa and submucosa. The purse string should be positioned to capture the desired amount of prolapse and position the final staple line to be appropriately proximal to the dentate line. The appropriate location of the purse string may vary within the range of the markings on the anoscope depending on degree of prolapsed mucosa and the desired amount of tissue to be removed. After the purse string is completed, remove the needle from the suture and release the hemostat from the free end. Digitally or visually assess the amount of tissue to be resected and select an appropriate anchor hole on the center rod. Insert the detachable anvil into the rectum so that the anvil is positioned proximal to the purse string suture. Cinch the purse string suture around the center rod and pass one end of the suture through the appropriate anchor hole in the center rod. Pass the other end of the suture through the same hole but in the opposite direction. Secure the tissue to the center rod with appropriate purse string tension and knotting. Cut and remove the excess purse string. Add gentle traction to the center rod while checking to confirm that all desired tissue has been gathered, that no unwanted tissue has been incorporated, and that there are no gaps in the purse string. On female patients, digitally inspect the rectovaginal wall while moving the anvil assembly slightly in and out to ensure that the rectovaginal tissues have not been incorporated into the purse string. Remove and reapply the purse string upon discovering any gaps that would result in an incomplete anastomosis or if unwanted tissues have been incorporated. Mate the anvil assembly with the instrument by fully extending the center shaft of the stapler by twisting the adjustment knob counterclockwise until it stops. Hold the center rod in one hand and mate the center rod to the stapler by inserting the blunt end of the center rod into the female shaft receptacle. Push firmly until the center rod clicks with an audible click into its fully seated position. Visually inspect the attachment to ensure that the center rod and stapler are fully mated. Close the device by holding the device perpendicular to the opening of the anus and turn the twist knob in the clockwise direction. Allow the device to close with neutral tension. Continue to twist the knob clockwise until the ready-to-fire indicator displays a green line. The safety will not release if the green ready-to-fire indicator is not visible. To ensure that the green bar remains visible in the ready-to-fire indicator window, do not turn the twist knob once the safety is released. Any unusual effort required to turn the twist knob in order to visualize at least a portion of the green bar in the indicator window may indicate excessive tissue, uneven tissue capture, or the need to use a larger staple size. Again, for female patients, digitally inspect the tissues captured transvaginally to ensure that rectovaginal tissues have not been captured in the device.
To fire the instrument, release the safety latch underneath the handle and squeeze the handle firmly until the handle contacts the safety latch. An audible and tactile click will indicate full firing of the stapler. Release the handle after firing and return the safety to the locked position. Remove the instrument by turning the adjustment knob one full turn counterclockwise and gently extract from the patient. Do not turn the twist knob more than one full turn after firing. Doing so may result in difficulty in removing the device or separation of the anvil assembly from the device. Following removal, inspect the staple line for hemostasis and correct any residual bleeding with a suture. To inspect the tissue sample or donut, turn the twist knob counterclockwise to fully open the instrument and inspect the tissue specimen to ensure that all desired tissue layers have been incorporated in the anastomosis. Remove the port from the anus and discard the device and all sharps as per your institution's policies.